G'day and welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I have a new rifle or rifle series in front of me actually. Um, I'll get and tell you what I'm talking about. There's a company called um, GCPD and if you look at that on the internet, no I'm not talking about the Gotham City Police Department. I'm talking about Gareth Crook Precision Development. Now we've seen a few rifles from Gareth. Um, I think we first saw the CWS which was a 20 inch barreled um, 308 in one of their more military based products which um, really nice rifle really well machined and it was the first time I really got to see what Gareth was building we had a bit of a play with that actually took that one out to 2000 meters in a 20 inch 308 so it performed very well very accurate like and like I said that my first real look at what the what his company did um, the next one he sent us one across another one to have a play with which was his take on a safari rifle very modern version of it, very tactical version of it, carbon barrel, nice bits and pieces, great fun rifle to use. That was in the 375 H&H. &H. Um, but another look at his gear. Um, uh, then, um, in the way of it's an, he's an Australian manufacturer, they're a small business, they put a lot of effort into their material coatings, into the, into the engineering side of things, and does things very much in an engineering sense, which I really like, and to me is a very aesthetically pleasing thing. I'm very much about the engineering side of things. And I got him to help us with building our rifle or a chassis and a chassis system to suit, purposely suit our bipod system, purposely suit our ELR stuff, which is what we did in our 300 PRC and now is in the 300 drum. Well, that chassis is suiting both things. So that was suiting the, the Remington 700 long action um, and stuff that we're only halfway through. It. We've only actually just got the 245 grain 30 cal projectiles that we didn't get to shoot in this season because some winter started now but we will be doing that chassis worked really well really happy same sort of thing special coding special machining special engineering really nice sort of stuff and and really a little bit purpose built for us as well so that's what i know of gareth i've always liked the products um i like what they do but it's uh, like you said it's a small manufacturer in australia and he's really looking at as all manufacturers what he can do to create more sales and grow his business and get bigger at what he's doing so this is his take on something that's going to could do other things as well but really i suppose um i suppose what i can see and what and it's partially designed for is to fit into the um, PRS series. So something the way of people building precision rifles for the precision rifle series, so in a competition base to go into that world. And I suppose the, the angle of attack is um, when you look at the costing or what people are doing. A lot of people will start with a factory rifle, um, be that of all the different factory rifles, chassis rifles and stock rifles and things that can go into that. And they build them all up. Um, into where they're performing really well um, and that's sort of really i suppose the entry level of the of the prs i'm talking centerfire prs of course um, and then they go the next there's a few next step whether they're spending more money and putting custom barrels or or modifying that system or they go with a completely custom system so where you get your own action your own chassis your own barrel and put them all together and generally, and then this gets a little complicated, I'm going to touch on money. Um, it gets complicated because it's different all over the world. Um, something basically double the money here, costs double here what it does in dollars in America. That's a bit because of our exchange rate. It's also import duties and da 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 da, all that sort of stuff. But in the, in the well built factory rifle, you're probably talking between two and a half to three thousand or two thousand to three thousand um, in differences in money and things, what you're really spending there. And in a custom rifle, once you've built it all properly with custom barrel, custom action, custom chassis, custom everything, then you're going into spending probably between the, the seven, um, probably six up to, up to 15, depending on what you're spending and what you can do in different monies in different parts of the world and, and in different options. Um, this one here is really angled at sort of in between that. Um, and it's really, I suppose, uh, a little little complex. There's probably you could see as a negative. This is a custom rifle, but you don't have all. You can't just. It's not made to take a different action or to bolt together with all sorts of different things. This is specifically built as a combination. There are some. There are some options. It doesn't come with the bipod. Doesn't come with the scope. But there are some options in the fashion of different rails and bits and pieces you can get on the bottom of it. Different um, pistol grips. 
Um, there is some choices at the moment. There's three different barrel options that he's actually doing there, which is one in a stainless steel match barrel. This other one, this is what runs in here is the nitrited, um, which is a little more compl a little, a little interesting, and I'll talk about that, but very good idea, I think. Um, and, or a carbon wrap barrel are choices there, but otherwise this is a complete combination. In some fashions, you could see that as a negative, like I said, with the fact that it's not completely custom. But always keep in mind, a good complete rifle is not just a sum of the parts bolted together. So because you spend a lot of money here and a lot of money there and a good brand here and a good brand there doesn't mean you've got a good rifle. Um, it really comes down to a combination. The combination, which isn't always about spending more, is better. Um, it isn't always not about spending more is better either, but it's the combination. The combination, as I say, the combo is always what it's about. This is designed as a combo. This is designed as a combination to work well together. That's what Gareth does. And the two things I would say about Gareth, and that's GCPD, so Gareth Crook Precision Development, um, his, the, his level of engineering and the way of trying to make things ergonomic, but also puts a lot of thought into engineering and testing to actually make things work nicely, but also very much into machining, the CNC side of things, the coating of materials, um, all that sort of stuff he puts a lot of effort into. Um, this nitrated barrel we're speaking about, and nitriting is a process of both heat and gas that causes the metal to various depths, and you can set how deep you're actually um, treating the metal, to actually harden and coat the metal, which makes it corrosion resistant, wear resistant, and basically toughens up the metal. He has done, and the f I've no doubt it's been done before, well, I don't know this, but this has been done both inside and outside. So the rifling is also nitriting. Now at this moment, I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. Um, and I think there's various ways you can go through the process. Bar Gar what Gareth's process has been is the rifle, the barrel has been done completely, machined, chambered, the works. Um, it's been lapped very thoroughly, and then it's been nitrated. So it hasn't actually been fired. The testing I've done, and actually took it out, we will do a lot more with this. I want to do a fair bit of um, video work and really put it in places and, and put it through all the hoops and, and nice. all the jumps nice. and, nice. And, and do some proper testing with it so I can really show it and, and show how I felt it in the overall side of things. So at the moment, it's only preliminary. I've been out and made sure that it's zeroed with this scope on it. I'm gonna run it with another scope on as well. More I'll touch on later. But you can see here, terrible weather, high wind, that sort of stuff, but we still put down a, a listen, I didn't measure it properly to be honest. I think it's just under two inch of those three shots. Um, so uh, just under a two inch group at 600 yards. So we're talking better than a third MOA was what it punched out like. I'm not calling anything yet. That's just my normal hand load uh, that I run in my house and I've run in other rifles as well, run the Savage and that sort of stuff uh, with 140 grain burger. Performed really well, so super happy with it. Um, but I won't call anything just yet. The nitriding side of things means that there's going to be very little wear in the rifling. Um, as to what that turns into, we'll tell you more of that as it goes as well. But like I said, there's three choices in those barrels. That's the one option which is quite um, original. And I think it will be, um, well, it might be a really good thing, the, in, the nitriding on the inside. Might slow down barrel, or might increase the barrel life. Um, but uh, I won't say anything more on that form yet. Beyond that, um, like I said, coatings, everything is, there's no sera coating in what you're looking at here. This is hard anodized, and then there's a multiple different things that Gareth uses for different products, but it's all basically converting the coating on the metal. The, the metal is, is more um, either bonded to electronically or converted the actual metal to a different thing, be it aluminium, be it titanium, be it, be it steel, whatever it is, lots of work into corrosion resistance, wear resistance, and making it look good too. Um, then there's other little features, the same as on my other one, like, like the bag rod, there's a little nylon or hard plastic rubbing block on the bottom here, so it can sit on things and it's got, it's not just metal rubbing on the bottom. Um, designed his own butt pad, I suppose I'll go through the rifle a little bit now. From the back here, um, the butt pad is now an upgrade from the one he built from us. This butt pad is adjustable in height and length of pull. The height adjustment is done with these solid set screws, so you actually lock them up properly, and that means that you can adjust it and it locks properly. Solid lock up, really good. Doesn't actually have any lock up um, per se on the adjustable of length of pull, 
That is done through, these are a nice tight feel. There's no wobble whatsoever, and when you turn this knob to is where it sits. It's done with a really nice tension, which means it doesn't move, um, it's not too hard for you to move with your hands, with your fingers, but it's not gonna be bumped. Really nice, and I've got that same thing on the back of the rifle he did for us, which has just been bulletproof. Same thing for the adjustable cheek riser. Nice, smooth, decent sort of profile to the cheek riser. Um, and that same sort of preload tension, which means it's not gonna rattle, doesn't move, there's no wobble in it whatsoever, but moves up and down. And probably some of the nicest machining I've seen in the way of what he performs on the back here. Go forward. I think there is an option on some. I haven't seen there, but the, it normally has an option of a folding option. This is an origin side of things, which is traditionally what I prefer is over a sporting rifle using for that sort of stuff. Folding it up isn't the problem. I'm not trying to put it in a small case. Um, and I should say this is also done with a full case with cutouts, all the bits and pieces. So it really is a pick up and carry complete combination. Um, but very solid lockup. Actually through the frame here, I was speaking to Gareth the other day, did quite a bit of work through here, um, making it very solid, but not making it too solid, making it so that there's no movement or flex in it, but it actually the way it transfers the recoil is done to where it gives a better feel about actually shooting here and the harmonics and everything are more actually something that's put some developing to working out. Um, I can say it's a, basically the same setup as what I've got on the, on the 300 PRC and the 300 RUM and listen, very, very nice feeling rifle and part of the accuracy I saw in both those um, cartridges, as I would always say, it's not a cartridge to make the accuracy, but it's actually how he's developed his chassis and how he's developed the back of the rifle. So really good on that score. Um, it's made to take normal AR pistol grips. This is his own in the straight up and down form, which is what most your PRS shooters uh, like to use. Um, I, this is nicely made. I haven't actually looked to see what it's made out of, but it's actually a very nice and built up one. It is his own pistol grip. Um, I probably, my size hand, the way I shoot, I prefer to wrap my hand around so I could actually have a normal angle pistol grip. But for people who want the shelf side of things to run their finger, thumb over to the side here and rest on there, uh, who like that side of it, um, this is set up for a really nice shelf to sit your thumb on. Really, really, not just sort of resting on the side. It really has a nice little flat net section where you can get your thumb in behind it. Trigger, Kelvin Elite, what comes with the thing um, with a lower safety. Keeps it out of the road, it's still easy to access and that sort of stuff. In truth, I'm not a safety shooter. I My safety's between here and it's attached to this thing. So if I'm not shooting, it's not on the trigger. But obviously you need safeties, a lot of people use them. And this forward and bad action on the safety down here makes this really nice, not on the road, and it's a very nicely put together piece of gear. Barnard action. Um, which is what comes with all these. That's how he's doing it. It is just the Barnard action. Very strong, very reliable. And feed side of things, bolt side of things, all that sort of stuff work really well. Comes with this little flu fluted bolt. Um, the Barnard coatings, it's like a black chrome sort of stuff. I found them really good. I really like the, 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 the strength and the, um, the material the Barnard stuff is made out of is, is another level of hard. Um, I've found them really, really good and I'm using in my 50, um, in my um, 375. I really like the Barnard action. They're a really good option. Um, and I probably will build, um, when I step down the road of doing the likes of my um, next Lapour action to be able to run some other ones, I probably will go the Barnard again. Um, they are sort of local being, being New Zealand, not that far away, but the simplicity versus the smart design versus the reliability I got of them are really super strong action. I really like them. So that comes in here. Um, his, the, 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 the chassis, the fore end, that sort of stuff. Listen, all really strong, nice strength to it. Nice hook up between the two. Um, I, the, the, the profiling he goes into here and the way the forward grip side of it very much comes from Gareth's hunting side of things. It always wants to keep to where that fore end is grippable um, and this really nice textured surface. This is actually in a in a plastic, high density plastic and I once again should look at the and see what it is. But all this stuff here gives it that really nice sort of usable feel to it um, and I and also is going to give you a bit more of a for people who want to use them and push them up against barricades and that sort of stuff. This is also going to protect the metal side of things even though there's good hard metal coating to have something that's plastic um, and by the looks of it, replaceable means it's a really nice idea on that sort of score. Um, the lockup between the barrel and the and the action actually it's a 
a, a straightforward system with lots of design put into it. Gareth being engineering has really gone into, and he went through some detail. I'm not going to complicate things on that sort of score, but the way he's made that so it locks up inside there really means that it's a really solid lockup. This is not just a screw in, bolt up, lock up thing. This has gone to the level where it has the, the locking nut like the Savage, um, but it's done to another level. It also comes with the spanner, which is designed to fit the lockup nuts on both ends. So it actually comes with a spanner that is part of the kit. Um, forward, this is, as I said, this is the nitrided barrel, comes with all the fluting. Um, so in the all-purpose side of this gun, there's some real qualities to go with that. Um, with the guys who want the heavier rifle, um, even though I found this perform really well, and because of its performance nature and the weight actions and things, it gives you the advantage to back off your weight a little bit to make it a little bit easier to move around. But for the guys who really going to go with the heavy um, PRS systems, guys running up in the 20 pounds and 24 pounds and things like that, getting into heavy rifles, you wouldn't go with the fluting side of things. You would go with the full barrel, but it's also designed all this for in with the bits and pieces he's got in the front here, which I'll get into a more in a minute. Um, he's designed to be able to deal with belt, bolt on, bolt in weight, bolt on different rails, made to be able to bolt on with all of your, your M-lock fittings and that sort of stuff, to be able to bolt stuff all over if you want to run more weight and get it heavier. Comes with muzzle brake already, so and that's one of the things to keep in mind in where this is positioned, what it's done. It is a complete combination. So it comes with a muzzle brake already, very nicely machined, lock up on the side of it, so easy to time, really a set up and sorted form. And you also see here the, this little um, Picatinny rail on the front, extended right out the front, so you can run a really bipod or long way out the front, get it out of your road. Um, and that also means in the way of setting up on the likes of um, tripod, that sort of stuff. This ends up with a very nice balance point, which is right on there, balanced in the middle for setting up in your tripod with, this is running the lighter barrel, with your legs out the front there, you get a nice balance out of side of things. One of the things that um, Gareth is very thorough about actually trying to, um, or focuses on, trying to get that balance in that place. But I suppose what I can tell you, um, this is really just a bit of a teaser. Um, the Gareth side of things, I feel, being a low, being an Australian manufacturer, I would like to help him in a way of get his product out there. I'm not a sales point. I'm not trying to sell the product by any means. I just am very proud of what he's built here. It's a really nice looking thing. Um, and I think, it's a, I think it's a pretty good strategy to be able to go for something that people, like I said, they want to take their next step. It is not a factory mass produced off the shelf thing on that score. It is going to be off the shelf, but very much in the same sort of fashion as a, and to the same level of detail as a purpose-built gunsmith custom rifle. This is built like that, but in a package that the decisions have been made. It's put together as something you can buy and priced in that sort of fashion where it's going to be largely cheaper than what your full custom ones are because it is built in the combination and because they're able to you know, package it in like that. So listen, I think it's a, a really, really nice rifle. I'm really looking forward to shooting it. We've got to wait for um, a bit of the sunshine to show up again. So whether that's in, in one week or that's in three weeks, but um, I've got a fair bit to do on our plate as well. I should touch on while I'm here, the scope that's sitting on top. Now this is a premium level scope. Um, it's, it's brand new to the market, I think. Um, this is one of the March high powers. It's in the uh, yeah, five to 42, so great range of power. Um, I actually checked, it's got, the, I think it's 36 mil of elevation. So we're talking about the 120 or a little bit more in the way of minutes of elevation in it. So March have really stepped up on that score. This is mil mil, I'm a bit more of an MOA guy, but still really nice reticle, really nice scope. And it's probably, this is premium sort of level. Um, there's one of the interesting things I'll just show you quickly um, is it has a lockup system, has this little dial over the side here. Um, red is for turning and then blue, um, is for locked up. So an interesting way to do the lock up on the side of it, um, but really nice from the dials to the focus to the glass to everything about this March scope is really, really um, top level and really nice to use with this, this scope. It is sort of a combination that works, but I'll also do a little bit of shooting with more of a, still a very good scope with not quite the level of, 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 of power or, or features of this, but that is the, um, the NX8 scope from Night Force. 
So something to show it's the rifle doing the whole thing. The scope is, listen, an awesome choice. And I look forward to using this scope and, and probably doing a, an, independent, an individual review on it as well. But a, um, listen, a really nice combination. I think that's my overall of the rifle. Um, I'll put some information down below. It's not, well, it, I think it is something that if you're really looking at buying one right now, I think it is something that, um, that Gareth can do right now. It's something they can actually build, but he hasn't quite worked out his marketing side of things and that sort of stuff. So I think it's gonna be released in the next month or so um, when, and go on the website and that sort of stuff. So at the moment, it's really just more a teaser. It's really more, um, something I want to do for something that's helped us. I just wanted to, to get it out there so people could see. I think it's, like I said, I think it's an awesome looking rig. I think it's a good idea. And I think it's a real contender for people who are getting serious about um, their rifle and want a, a really a really strong contender in a, in a sporting option um, or in the PRS option or whatever you want to use it for. I think it's a really good idea. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking in on us. Catch you next time.